<laughs> Praise the Lord. Reggie Knockerhead here, a.k.a. Brother with the Junior. Brothers and sisters, we turn our Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And we'll be looking at verse 10, and it reads, And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shown Unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the adoration, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brother, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so the king Solomon, he prays to God uh, 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 to dedicate the, the temple. The temple, Solomon's temple. And when Solomon ends his prayer, a fire from heaven comes down and to the amazement and the wonders of all the people that witnessed this fire that came down after Solomon prayed for the dedication of the temple. The people were awestruck and they, they fell down to the pavement and they worshiped and praised the Lord and said, for our Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And then it, it, the Solomon, he, he started sacrificing burnt offerings, meat offerings, peace offerings. And, 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 the, and the, the priests, they started playing their instruments and their trumpets. And, and David even got, David, uh, Solomon's father, he even got into the celebration and he started praising the Lord. And, and it just seemed like they were praising the Lord. Uh, for, for 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 seven days, they were doing altar uh, uh, worship and, and burnt sacrifice and peace offerings. And uh, and also they were keeping the feast day. So they were merry and, and happy. And they did this for seven days. And at the eighth day, then we pick this up in, in verse 10. And on the three and 20th day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents. And watch this. This is the attitude that they had. Because they spent the seven days of, of burnt offerings and, and, and feast of um, worshiping. And they said they, they sent the people away glad and merry in their heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed David. And to Solomon and to all of Israel. So the people left with a glad and merry heart. When, when, when God, Jehovah God showed the people of Israel his goodness. And, and this is the, the mindset that the Lord wants us to have. And in and, and, and such a way that Solomon even spoke about this powerful truth and this established principle in some of his letters. And if we take a look in Proverbs chapter uh, 15. Again, he wants us to have a merry heart, Jehovah God. And if we turn to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, and it tells us this. This is Solomon who, who experienced this, the, the, the God wanting the people of Israel to have a, a merry, a glad heart. In, in uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, it says, a merry heart make of a cheerful countenance, but the spirit but the sorrow of a heart, the spirit is broken. And so God wants us to have a merry heart because it makes a cheerful confidence. And then watch this in verse 15 of Proverbs chapter 15. He says, all the days of uh, are afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. And then also we see in uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, the uh, Solomon also writes, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. So a merry heart does good like medicine. It, 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 it's a continuous feast. And, and, and what, what else he said? And it's a cheerful countenance. And this is what the people of God were experiencing when they got the response from God, the fire that came down to just uh, an affirmation. And they were having this this, this, this merry heart, which was a continuous feast, a uh, cheerful countenance, and good medicine before a whole seven days of, of altar um, um, worship and also feast worship. 
And also, Solomon even picks up this same truth in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 about, about this merry heart. And if we turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, praise the Lord! <laughs> A merry heart! <laughs> We see in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 7, it says, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy work. And so this is, the, this is what happens when a child of God has a merry heart. We, we have a cheerful confidence. We have a, a continuous feast. And it is, and that cheerful heart is like good medicine, and that we can now go thy way because God has accepted us. Go, we're the accepted of the beloved, and this is what the children of Israel were experiencing those seven days. That when the eighth day it, it was solemn, and they went home with a glad and merry, cheerful heart to their homes. And, you know, when we think about the New Testament, we think about the New Testament, they carry out that same uh, established principle and that powerful truth of having a merry heart. As a matter of fact, the New Testament speaks about it as be being of good cheer. And, 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 you know, in the New Testament, this term is mentioned seven times. Seven. And seven is God's divine number. And of those seven times, that it's mentioned five times, it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saying, be of good cheer. And we know five is the number of grace. And it's interesting, the other, the, 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 there's four times where actually Jesus says, be of good cheer. But the fifth time, it's uh, the Apostle Paul repeating what the Lord Jesus said to him. And the other uh, uh, two times, that it's mentioned, it's the Apostle Paul. So you can think of it this way. When Jesus is saying it the four times, it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saying it. And the fifth time, it's the Apostle Paul, a gospel preacher of grace, taking the baton from Jesus Christ about be of good cheer. And then the other two times, it's the Apostle Paul. <laughs> So let's take a look at these times in the New Testament of this great powerful truth that's spoken about being of good cheer. And if we turn to Matthew chapter 9, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first mentions or is recorded that Jesus, uh, the be of good cheer, where a man is, uh, is lowered and they broke a roof because they, the, the man was paralyzed. And, and, and his four friends carried them to, for Jesus to heal him. But they couldn't get into the house because it, it was crowded. So they um, decided to um, go up the roof and, 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 and break the roof and lower this, this man who was paralyzed so that Jesus could heal him. And now watch what happens when, when Jesus encounters this man in Matthew chapter 9. And look what he says, Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. <laughs> Matthew chapter 9 verse 2 watch this it says and so it says and behold they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying on a bed and Jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee. So he can now be of good cheer because why? His sins are forgiven. And not only was his sin forgiven, later on when he had his encounter, he walked away with his mat praising the Lord. <laughs> Let's see. And so this is the first time it's mentioned where Jesus is saying, be of good cheer. So what's the next time? In Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. The, apostles, the, the disciples are in a in, in, in the sea and it's dark and there's a storm and there's Jesus walking on water and and, and, and watch this when he's walking on water and, and with the disciples in a boat in a dark and it's a storm and there's Jesus walking on water and watch what he says in, in Matthew chapter 14 verse 27 says but straightway Jesus spat unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid so there's Jesus Christ in the midst of a storm darkest part of the night as tumultuous winds and waves are coming around to the disciples but there's Jesus saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid let's look at now the the third time our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says this in recorded in the book of 
uh, of the New Testament, and it is in Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6 is also recording the, the same event, and we'll just look at it, and it says in Mark chapter 6, verse 50, and he says, For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them. And this is the same event we see in Matthew chapter 7. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And so this is the third time that, that, that's recorded where Jesus says, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Be of good cheer. So let's look at now the fourth time where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it's recorded by John and, 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 and the, 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 the apostle, the, the apostle who, who referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he records this in this tender moment that he, uh, that Jesus Christ is with the uh, with the disciples in the upper room the night before he's going to be betrayed, and he's having this tender moment, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he's encouraging them and assuring them. And in John chapter sixteen, notice what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says to the disciples who he loves. He says in John chapter sixteen, <laughs> in verse thirty three, he says this. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye, in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so in this tender moment, the very last thing that he says just before he prays, the, the high priest he prays to, to the Father, the last thing that he says is be of good cheer. <laughs> And now let us look at the now the time when the Apostle Paul is now re, um, sharing what Jesus had told him in, in, in a time when he's um, on trial and he's going um, and standing on his defense against some religious leaders. And now he's repeating to these religious leaders what Jesus says. So this would be the fifth time that Jesus says, but it's being passed off to the apostle of grace, the grace preacher, the apostle Paul saying this. So five times Jesus says, but the fifth time that uh, that is recorded what Jesus says, it's the apostle Paul repeating what Jesus said. And so if we turn to Acts chapter 23, <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to Jesus Christ. And in Acts chapter 23, verse 11, this is the Apostle Paul standing on his defense and uh, now quoting what Jesus had told him. This would be the fifth time that Jesus says, it, but it's the Apostle Paul taking the baton to say what Jesus had told him. And he says this, and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul. For it is thou that testify of me in Jerusalem. So must thou bear witness also at Rome. And so we see that now the Apostle Paul is quoting what Jesus had shared with him. And that would be the fifth time that, that Jesus has mentioned about be of good cheer. But it was the Apostle Paul taking that honor to share that in his defense against the religious leaders. So now let's look at them two times. That the Apostle Paul is now talking about be of good cheer. And when he says it, he says it in the most unfavorable, uncomfortable uh, circumstance situation. They're out on a boat these, the, the, uh, and, and, and they're on their way to Rome. And there comes this storm of epic proportion. And there's about over 270 odd people on this boat. And, and there's this storm that lasted for about weeks, and, and it was tumultuous. They, they couldn't, they didn't see no daylight. It was just night, and, and just a, a, a terrible storm. But listen to what the apostle Paul says, and we pick this up in Acts chapter 27, verse 22. He says, "And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but the ship." And, and, and so he's he's hearkening back to what he said in Acts chapter 23, verse 11, what the Lord Jesus tried to be of good cheer. And then watch this. When we jump down to verse 25, which will be the seventh time that this term be of good cheer, having a merry heart, a cheerful countenance is it, it, like good medicine. It's like a continuous feast. The Apostle Paul says, 
in verse 25 of Acts chapter 27, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that I that that it shall be as even as he told me. So we could be of good cheer, my brothers and sisters, when you believe on the Lord and Savior and soon to come in King Jesus Christ. Be of good cheer, no matter how tumultuous the storm is, because when you're in good cheer, you know that God is pleased with you. God will answer you. God, you will have a cheerful countenance. You will have that continual feast. You will, it'll be this good medicine because God is with you. So you can be in good cheer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience. You. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless in the presence of his glory, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. For his for the Lord God is good and his mercy endures forever. And like the children of Israel and like being those people that was ministered to even in tumultuous times, we could be of good cheer. Call our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will have tribulations, but be of good cheer for Jesus has overcome. And because of that, <laughs> be of good cheer. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God may love. Be of good cheer.